Hi everyone. Now, I recently got asked about uh, this fly, this fly here. Now this is called the Trout Master. Uh, it's a, basically it's a pattern I've died many years ago. And one when I used to work at a trout fishery and it was, it, it worked a treat. It was one of these type of flies that it could represent a few nymphs. Uh, as well, uh, I caught on it even when there's, as you can probably see, it's very minnow like, uh, small fry pattern. And especially small sticklebacks, and this is the pattern that did well. Uh, and this is probably more recognised as a colour combination for the, uh, the the trout master nymph. So I'm going to be tying it. So it's as I say, quite easy, quite easy to tie. And it could be weighted or unweighted. This is the weight of the the dumbbell eyes. That's all, nothing else. And uh, and that is glass beads. Uh, I used to fish it just along the bank. I used to target fish that was feeding along the bank, and I've used this nymph in a to say it worked extremely well. The main size was a size 10. Now this is a basically a 2XL uh, nymph hook or you could use a size 10 lure hook. Uh, it would be the ideal sort of size for these, these flies. Now thread I'm going to be using, I'm going to use this rusty orange, or sorry rusty brown. You could use orange, orange was a good colour so I was trying to say there. Uh, fire orange is another good colour but I'm going to stick to this. Now I'm going to basically put the dumbbell eyes on first so Put some thread down, about the thorax length, come back up to about maybe a mil and a half or so from the eye. Then we tie in these glass, these are dumbbell, you can see there, these are from Venyers, uh, the damsel dumbbell eyes, uh, so basically meant for nymphs. And this is a gold version, now you could, there's red, there's green, and you could change the colour of this nymph to suit so whatever you're trying to represent as well. But this is the standard one. Oops. Now the art is glass beads with some heavy nylon to melt it to hold them. Uh, you can make your own. So, but anyway, I'm going to figure out the beads on to the top of the shank. I see there's no weight, not much weight on these, they're just basically to give impression of eyes. Now I'm just making sure they're tied in. And then I'm going to run down, you want to layer a thread on your shank, the shank of the hook, all the way to the base, I like to get to the bend of the hook. Now, there is a barbless hook, so you can use whatever you like. It's fine. Now, what I've got is brown partridge or grey partridge, any of the two. These are these are a small feather, medium sized feather, and this is a large feather. Now, I use the large feathers for just to use them up for the for the tail of these flies. They're well marked and they're nice and soft. I'd usually take the tip out, so I'd nip the tip out, pull these fibres together. And you're looking for a small, not too long, just a small tail like shape. Just tie them on the top. Couple of turns. Just check, right, that's fine, that's my ideal length. Now, I'm just going to use this waist as bulk to build up the body a wee bit. Now the rib of the fly I'm using, a, this is a small oval gold tinsel. Again you could change that, you could change that to silver or whatever, but gold was the original. So I'm just going to quickly bring the thread up here, just to tie these in. It looks a bit messy, but we can always tidy it up on the way back down. Watch the point of the hook. There we are. It makes things neater and tighter if you do that. Now, I'm going to use a couple of dubbins uh, that are kind of new in the market. This one's from Fully Mill. Now, this is a Euro Nymph Flash, it's called. It's Light Hair's Ear UV, kind of ideal fry like. It just looks, it's ideal. Uh, it's just the type of colour I would put on myself. But you can buy that. So, anyway, I'm going to put the dubbin on. Just want a slight taper in the body, you want to taper up to get that nymph shape. Start it off the back, just get an anchor point and tighten it from there. As I say, just work your way up, get a nice taper in the body. Don't be shy with it, because especially if you're doing represent fry with it, you can get a nice thick body. Nice and tight. See what I like. Just tiny bit more. 
just to finish it off. There we go. And then we want to rib it. Now I usually do a straight turn at the back. Make sure the tail's sitting okay. And then we rib the body a good five or six times. Into this last turn, I'm just making sure that any fibers going forward is drawn back. And then secure in your, your rib. And trim away. Now the thorax cover and the basic form of the head, I'm using the pheasant tail. It fell in the floor, so that's it. Just a normal pheasant tail. Got quite a few fibres here, just bring it out 90 degrees from the stem, tear it away. Now, because I'm just using it as a thorax cover, try and keep it quite open. Just bring it together a wee bit here. Now, you trim it to the fibre thickness I want to suit the fly. So, I mean, I don't want to tie it right in at the tips because it's just too thin. I want more of the, the thickness of the the pheasant tail fibre, so make sure it's secure. Now the thorax, I'm using another fuller mill dubbin. Now uh, quite regular I use a UV type dubbin and some quite a few of my nibs and it, I found it to work really well. So this is the uh, the sunburst version, it's called uh, Tactical Micro Flash Dub UV. So it's a nice, it's a nice dubbin of some of my desk. And I'm just going to build it up from the back of the eyes up to the, the body. It's very easy to dub. So we start it off quite tight and then we work our way up. Just building my thorax up. So it's the same thickness of the body at that point there, but I want it to taper towards the eyes so we thin it out. Just thin the dubbing as we wind down through. Up against the eyes and take away the excess. Now we're going to put the legs in, so we've got the partridge. Now, what I'm going to do, you could wind the hackle on, but I'm just going to put them either side of the, the thorax. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch out the tip of the partridge hackle and then use the come from the top down to the way like this holding the fibres either side of the shank. There's a couple of long fibres and I'm taking them out. So we just basically hold it either side, come round with a couple of turns. You want that right at the back of the eye. You'll see how it forces the the legs out either side. Now it's just a matter of then making sure you have them sitting where you want because you can still move them around at this point. Now what I'm going to do is tie in I'll bring over the thorax cover as well, once I'm happy. So I'll bring that over. I'm going to save a bit of bulk by tying them both in at the same time. So, just come over, got your pheasant tail, right on the top. You see there my turn. One, two, three. And I'm going to bring my thread to the front. And I'm bring first thing around, I'm going to bring down the, the waist of the partridge. Just a couple of turns to hold and then trim away. And then bring over the pheasant tail. Two or three turns again to hold. Trim away the baste. Make sure you wax your thread. And there we are. Just make sure you get a reasonable head. And you're tying down the pheasant tail and your and the partridge at the same time. You're just saving a wee bit of bulk by doing that. And then wet finish. And then all you have to do is varnish. Let me show you what it looks like. You can see that nice shape. You want to try and keep that nice shape. Some dubbing caught there. I'll just draw it back on my nail. See the tail. And there we are. Now what I can do here, sometimes it's some best just to encourage the shape by right, just trimming away the excess dubbing on the underside. And there we go. And then it's just a matter of varnishing. Now I like to put a wee drop between the eyes here and the underside. 
and then onto the front. There's some varnish around there. So there we are. That's your Trait Master Nymph. As I say, it's a very good fry pattern as much as a nymph, by, uh, nymph pattern. And uh, as I say, it will represent a few nymphs as well as a, a small, especially a stickleback. Uh, it did work well for the stickleback pattern in this colour combination. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And again, thanks for watching.